In this video lesson, we are going to look at self joins. If you remember when we looked at joins earlier, we looked at the join type and we can get to this through the relationships window or while we're creating a query. Then we have the three types of joins one, two, and three. And we said that the join for option one was called an inner join. The join from option two was called a left outer join and option three was a right outer join. And these all define what data is displayed when you create a query. And it is basically saying, do you want to include all the information from the left table or all the information from the right table or just the information where the, there's a corresponding field or corresponding record in each table. But the type of join I want to look at next is called a self join. And this only works on one table and it operates in a different way. Let's have a look at our staff list table and you can see that we've got quite a few members of staff and each member of staff has a position in the organisation and each member of staff has a line manager to whom they report. So for example, Peter Nider reports to staff number 101. We have to go and have a look at that employee number to see who that is. And that's fairly straightforward. There's 101. So Peter Nider reports to Richard Cheshunt. Richard Cheshunt is the department manager and he reports to whoever 536 is. There we are, 536. Singh Vikram, who is the director of the organisation. That's not very easy to see, is it? So let's have a look at a self-join which will allow us to see that information in a much more straightforward fashion. To create a self-join, we need to create a query. So again, I'm going to create it in design view and add the tables that we want to work with. And for this, we want to work with a staff list table. And the staff list table. We're actually going to add the staff list table twice. Look at the name at the top of the caption, as it's called. We've got staff list and staff list one. Now, the table isn't actually there twice. It isn't duplicated. It's just referred to twice. It's just to help us to create this query. But having a table called staff list and staff list one is not really very useful. So what we're going to do is we're going to rename this one to something else. We're going to rename it managers. It'll have the same data in it. And we won't have created a new table. It's just the way that we are referring to it. Now remember that every single object and most parts of objects in a database has got properties associated with it. And to find the properties associated with staff list one table, we use the properties box. And it's called the field list properties. And you can see there staff list one. That's what matches the titling here. So all we need to do is in the alias box, type in whatever we want to call this second um, instance, if you like of the staff list table, we're going to call it managers. See how that's changed now? So we've got staff list and managers. It's the exact same data. We're just referencing twice and calling it something different to make our life a little bit easier. So let's populate our query. We'll have the employee number from the staff list. We'll have the surname from the staff list and the first name. And remember, what we're trying to do is work out who these people report to. And we want to know the name of the person they report to. We want to know the surname of the manager. So we'll add the surname back in again. 
So you can see we've added the surname twice, but the first time it's referenced from the staff list table, and the second time it's referenced from the managers instance of the table. Now you'll notice we haven't yet got a join between the staff list table and the second instance of the staff list table. So let's create that now, and we do it simply by clicking and dragging as we do any other uh, link. And we want to find the employee number, sorry, not the employee number, the report to, which contains the employee number. So we're going to take the report to and drop it on the employee number of the managers. It's got to go there. Remember, when you're creating a link, the link has got to go through two fields that have got the same data in it. So what this is going to do is look at the staff member, look at who they report to, which in the table is a number. This join is going to force us to look that number up in the second instance. So it's linking that number. Let's have a look and see what's happened. We'll switch to Datasheet View. And there we have Peter Nider and his manager is Cheshunt. Brian Valdron, his manager is Myers. It's taking the information from the staff list table, the reports to field, and instead of putting the number in, it's actually looking up that number, that employee number, and returning the employee's name. Let's have a look at that again, because you'll notice this field title is not very conducive, so we can change that. And we do that using properties again. So we'll look at the properties box. I've got surname selected there. We'll look at the properties box. And in this instance, it, it's, it doesn't have the word alias. Microsoft do this sometimes. They have the same feature, but call it different things. In this instance, it's called caption. And we can just type in here what we want that field to be called. So that when we now look in data sheet view, you can see that field is now called managers. I'll just look at that again. I selected the field I was working with, I chose properties, and then it was the caption area. So there we have a self join using the same data in the same table. We've got their employee, and we're automatically looking up their manager's surname. That's a self-join.